when you mentioned Alzheimer's disease, though, you kind of trip another wire in my brain. Uh, for the last couple of years, I've been working with a, a brilliant scientist from India. He was formerly director of the Indian National Brain Institute, Dr. Pravat Mandal, M-A-N-D-A-L. And uh, he and, and I've helped with a couple of his sub few of his papers now have shown that in patients with mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, there's a marked decrease in glutathione in the brain in these patients. We, we can measure this with a very sophisticated imaging device called MR spectroscopy, non-invasively. It's an MRI device and spectroscopic evaluation of the various brain chemicals is obtained. Mm. And glutathione is the main antioxidant in the brain. Mm. And it's and, and and what we've postulated and others have as well is that oxidative stress is the underlying pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease meaning the excess production of free radicals leads to mitochondrial impairment, leads to the subsequent deposition of beta amyloid plaque, leads to the formation of neurofibrillary tangles, which are the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. So the question of course is, well, can we take glutathione and what kind of preparations of glutathione might one take if there's mild cognitive impairment mm -hmm. early alzheimer's disease and uh there are, there are several products on the market but there's one in particular called continual g uh and there's an online site for it i'm not affiliated with it in terms of any financial remuneration or background mm -hmm. but uh some brilliant neuroscientists at the University of New South Wales in Australia mm -hmm. have shown that a particular compound uh, gets into the brain better than than others. Mm -hmm. So what what we really want to do, and we're looking for financial support now in terms of grants, is take a cohort of patients with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, measure the glutathione in the brain, document that it's low, and then concurrently do neuropsychological testing, mm -hmm. and then administer glutathione to the patient over a course of time, re-image and retest to see if we can make a difference with a very simple procedure, non-pharmacologic in terms of a drug. Uh, you know, the, the drug industry has spent billions of mm -hmm. dollars looking for the, quotes cure for Alzheimer's. The recent drug, Lekembi, mm -hmm. uh, has been released. It costs $26,000 plus, dollars, has a 27% uh, effectiveness in delaying cognitive impairment by six months and has a 21% complication rate of intracranial hemorrhage, intracerebral hemorrhage and cerebral edema. Still, we're not there, yeah. you know? So again, we're kind of, we're, we're very excited by the observations that have been made primarily by the team in India uh, but uh, we're, we're collaborating now at the University of Pittsburgh to uh, push this forward. So if there are any individuals who want to get involved mm -hmm. and help, help us with this project, particularly with financial support, uh, with very high level, very high level Alzheimer's investigators, uh, here at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, I'd be happy to uh, entertain any questions from them. Okay. 
Well, yes, you'll have to give me a a link or something that they should sure. connect to. Um, my, but... G, my, my Gmail, maroon, right. jc at gmail.com. Excellent. Thank you. Just one, one last thing while we're on that. So the glutathione um, therapy that you're looking at, do you does it look like it would be able to help once Alzheimer's is there or only kind of in preventing it in the first place? Well, you know, you have to think of Alzheimer's disease as a neurodegenerative disease on a spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, early Alzheimer's disease, there's not that much destruction. But as time goes on, you have... Uh, you, you have neuronal toxicity, apoptosis, and death of cells in a spectrum. So when you get to the tail end of the spectrum, you're, you're not able to Lazarus-like bring the neurons back. Right. So the whole, the whole thing, even for the drugs that are being used, is in an early, if at all possible, yeah. uh, that early part of the spectrum where there's mild cognitive impairment, uh, memory loss uh, that's not severe, uh, and, and the other hallmarks of the disease. Right. 